we, we did put to work almost $9 billion in equities on a net basis okay. from February to, to March to take advantage of the market opportunity. I mean, what, what, we, we, what we find today, honestly, is we find a tale of two different markets. So on one side, we have the traditional growth stocks that are, are on average up 25% year to date, right? And then we have the other 70% of the market that is down 15%. And even though I'm a big believer in some of these secular trends uh, that are benefiting the Amazons, Googles, and SaaS providers of the world, I think the spread differential between the winners and the losers is too wide right now. And we're putting more money to work in some of the kind of COVID-19 losers, if you will, some of the companies that have been left behind, where we see really attractive returns on a two- to three-year time horizon. Like what, David? Give us some uh, examples. If you can't do specific stocks, then talk sectors. But stocks, if you can. Sure. So, I mean, I, I talk about utilities. I think utilities probably are the most attractive asset class of any asset class right now. The average utility is down 13% year-to-date. You know, rates are low. That should be benefiting utilities. Uh, their earnings are, will be modestly impacted by COVID-19 versus the rest of the market that's down 20 to 30%. If you look at utilities, they're the one sector that benefits from probably a President Biden because uh, tax rates are passed through for their business model. They benefit from renewable uh, tax credit extensions. And a company like AEP or a nice source with they can grow earnings at a 6% rate uh, with a 3.5% dividend yield looks very attractive today relative to equities on a risk-adjusted basis, looks very attractive to corporate bonds, looks very attractive to treasuries. And it's kind of win. I think you win either way here. If the market goes lower, you win. If the market goes higher, I think you still win. Again, on a 12 to 18 month time horizon. Utilities, interestingly, the only sector to finish the day lower. What's been popular is the exact opposite. It's the growth trades. It's Amazon. It's, it's Tesla, PayPal. I mean, these new highs every day. Microsoft, Apple. What do you think changes that dynamic, David? I think just valuation matters. I think, you know, again, what, what we've done well over time with is by taking, you know, looking at where opportunities exist in the marketplace, right? Not too long ago, Amazon was a little bit out of favor, right? And then all of a sudden, Amazon has, has had a huge rally this year. You know, I, I do believe if you look at utilities, again, on a, you know, not tomorrow, not next month, but on a two- to three-year time horizon, the riskiest returns of investing in utilities look extraordinarily compelling to me relative to just about every other asset class. And those Amazons and the SaaS providers, like I said, we've been pulling back exposure to that. But again, I think you guys know us well enough, we tend to zig when the market zags and, and vice versa. So uh, we see good relative value there, and we'll let the, we'll let the, let the market get, uh, get it right over time. Uh, Anastasia, we spoke earlier about the sort of range-bound nature of, of markets at the moment. Uh, if we are to break the downside part of that range, uh, what would it take? Would it be more cases and, and uh, pauses of the economic reopenings? Would we need that to increase dramatically from the levels of the last couple of weeks or, or just slightly from, from what we've seen? Yeah, well, if I think it's an important discussion because I do think that we probably somewhere would be in between 3,000 and 3,300 on the S&P. And what keeps us anchored around 3,000 is some of the key technical uh, moving day average, the 50 and the 200 day. But what do we take for us to break below that? I think is not only the increase in the new daily cases, but also the hospitalization rates, the hospitalization rates and the mortality rates. One of the reasons why I think the market has been resilient, even though we've seen over 50,000 new daily cases reported in the United States, if you look at the hospitalization rates for Arizona, Texas, California, Florida, they're nowhere close to where they were in New York and New Jersey. So as long as that remains the case, and we all know this is a lagging indicator, but so far, it tells me that the demographic is different enough, the age, the average age is different enough, and maybe our containment efforts are better, our treatment effort, efforts are better. So as long as that remains the case, I think yeah. we can maintain the bottom of the 3,000. And then on the upside, 3,300 is where you start to think about the cap fundamentally, because you look to 2021 earnings, let's say it's $165 for S&P, you sign it 20 times multiple, so that gets you roughly in that range. To break above that, we would really need to see a breakthrough on the vaccine or treatment front. Yeah, I mean, there, there are still plenty of questions out there, David. Dr. Fauci participated in this, this stream interview, an online Q&A at the NIH with one of his colleagues, a doctor there, 
He says the current state is really not good. The reopening across the country has led to a situation where we now have record-breaking cases. As a market participant, David, shouldn't that, shouldn't that give you some pause, especially if we're talking about rolling back reopening? Again, I, I'm really, again, my, my time horizon might be a little bit different here, but I, I'm really thinking more about 2022 and 2023, uh, earnings power for the market, for individual companies. And I, I am a firm believer, whether it be vaccines or therapeutics, that we will be in a post-COVID-19 world in 2022 and probably in part of 21 as well, based on all the work we've done on the various vaccines and therapeutic options out there. Again, I have no idea what the market's going to do over the next month, next week. But I, I think if you if you have a similar time horizon to what we have, you know what's happening in the marketplace today around, you know, the, the cases is not a something that I'm overly concerned about. Well, it doesn't appear others are as well with the action like we saw today. Dow 459 points at the close. Anastasia Amoroso, Mark Lehman, David Drew, thank you all for joining the conversation. Thank you.